Hey there movie buffs. Get ready to dive into a mind-bending story about a creepy clown. Imagine this. You're strolling down the street, minding your own business, when out of nowhere, this bizarre clown with a totally insane mask pops up. Talk about a major discomfort. This clown seems to have a knack for showing up at the most inconvenient times, driving you absolutely nuts. But fear not, my friends, because I've got the inside scoop on why this nasty clown is haunting you and, most importantly, how to survive this freaky encounter. Alright, let's break it down. Let's call our character John. He is walking when he takes a right turn. Little does he know, there's a clown, or should I say, a jester, standing right there in an orange suit. He's got a mind-boggling mask and hat. Now, here's the kicker, John somehow manages to completely miss this crazy clown. I mean, seriously, how did he not see it? The clown was practically right there, staring him down. But hey, maybe John was just a bit on edge or had something else on his mind. As John continues his walk, the orange-suited jester trails behind him. You'd think John would turn around and check who's following him, right? Nope, not a chance. It's like he's completely oblivious to the fact that someone's right on his tail. But wait, it gets even weirder. Suddenly, John stops at a place with a staircase leading to another street on his right. And out of nowhere, a small hand appears on the wall. And guess what? A little girl emerges from that spot. Now, hold on tight, because this girl is actually John's daughter from his childhood. And get this, he doesn't even acknowledge her presence. As John continues his journey, he reaches a bridge, and guess who he sees again? Yep, that little girl. He ignored her once again. It's pretty strange, right? And then, out of the blue, John decides to pull out a picture of him and his daughter. He's clearly nervous and tense, desperately trying to make amends for leaving his daughter and wife years ago. He dials his daughter Emma, who, let me tell you, is unhappy with him. She's angry, she's upset, and she wants him to stay far away from her. Ouch. But just when you think things can't get any stranger, the clown jester reappears behind John in the most weird way. And here comes the tearjerker moment John is in tears, apologizing to everyone around him. It's like he's pouring his heart out, seeking forgiveness. Out of nowhere, the jester, that mysterious jester, places his hand on John's shoulder. The jester seems oddly familiar to John. It's like they have some sort of history together. And here's where things get even crazy the clown starts shedding tears too. It's like he's feeling John's pain. But hold on tight, because this is where the real nightmare begins. In the blink of an eye, the clown covers John's mouth, and before you know it, a sinister noose appears around John's neck. The clown, in a demonic fashion, starts tightening the noose and poor John is left floating in the air. And guess what? The clown tossed him off the bridge, sending him to his demise. It's a chilling display of demonic power. But here's the kicker, there's not a single soul around to witness this horrifying act. Seriously, where is everyone? Is it the dead of night or something? Not even a night duty security guard in sight. It's like a ghost town. Fast forward to the funeral. And there are two girls standing there, Jasline and Emma. Now, here's the twist. They're stepsisters. People are coming and offering their condolences to Jasline. But Emma, well, she's standing off to the side, looking fed up with all of this. Clearly, she's not a fan of her dad, John. She's the one who talked to John last time on the phone. Taking a proper distance, she walked away. Emma decides to call her mom and they start discussing the funeral arrangements. Emma glances back towards the grave, and what does she see? Nobody but that orange suited the jester dancing in a strange manner near her dad's resting place. Talk about a major creep fist. But here's the kicker. When Emma turns to talk to her mom again and looks back, the clown, that jester, vanishes into thin air. It's like he was never there. She ignored it and went on with her day. The demonic clown jester didn't just disappear. Nope, he lurked behind a tree, watching Emma like a total creep. And the people in charge of the graveyard showed up. I mean, come on, it's a graveyard, show some respect. They told the jester to scram, that the services were over, but did he listen? Nah, he started annoying them. And before you know it, he played his twisted games and killed both of them. But wait, it gets even crazier. One of the guys managed to call 911 before biting the dust. And guess what? It's pouring rain, and there's not a single cop in sight. Seriously, what's up with that? No police, no news coverage, nothing. It's like the whole world turned a blind eye to the death of two people in a graveyard. Talk about messed up. Anyway, let's fast forward to nighttime. Emma heads to a cafe to meet her stepsister, Jasley. She's standing outside, contemplating whether she should even bother meeting her. I mean, she's not exactly thrilled about the whole stepsister situation. But eventually, she decides to give it a shot and joins Jasley at the table. At first, Emma's not exactly feeling comfortable around Jasley. But as they start talking and getting to know each other, things take a turn. They actually start enjoying each other's company and having a good time. And then, out of nowhere, Jasleen pulls out an envelope and hands it to Emma. Curiosity peaked, Emma opens it up. And what does she find? A picture of her with John, the deceased guy. 
Yeah, the same John who left her and her mom high and dry. Turns out, he got married and had a whole new daughter, Jasleen. Talk about a bombshell. Naturally, Emma's mood takes a nosedive. She's furious and lets Jasleen know exactly how she feels. I mean, who wouldn't be angry? John just waltzes back into their lives like nothing has happened. So, in a fit of anger and frustration, Emma storms out of the cafe. And just when you thought things couldn't get any crazy, Emma finds herself walking alone on the footpath next to the road. And who shows up? That mysterious clown jester. Yeah, the same one she recognized before. This time, he's holding a few cards, like he wants to play some twisted game with her. But Emma's not having any of it. She ignores him and keeps walking. But guess what? He pops up again at the turn, showing her those damn cards. This time, Emma's had enough. She realizes this is getting insane. I mean, the guy wasn't even standing where she saw him before. So, she bolts and runs into a nearby shop for safety. Hold on a second, though. Why the heck didn't she call the cops? I mean, seriously. This is textbook harassment. Some dude has been following her all day, popping up out of nowhere, and she doesn't even think about calling the cops. It's like she's playing hard to get into danger. Emma, after seeking refuge in the shop, thinks she's finally safe from that creepy jester clown. But guess what? He shows up again, standing in the same damn spot. And then, just like that, he walks away. Talk about giving you the heebie-jeebies. But hold on, it doesn't end there. This jester clown decides to terrorize a couple of innocent kids with one of his nasty tricks. I mean, seriously. This creature has no boundaries. He's out to disturb anyone who crosses his path. Meanwhile, Jaslyn is at home, handing out candies to kids and settling in to watch a horror movie. But suddenly, she starts feeling this sense of terror creeping up on her. And to make matters worse, someone knocks on her door. Now, you can imagine the fear coursing through her veins. But when she opens the door, it's just her friends coming to meet her and dragging her off to the Halloween festival. Phew, talk about a relief. So, Jaslyn shares her encounters with shadows, terrifying figures, and even her own father. The conversation takes a spooky turn as her friends start sharing their own ghost stories and belief. But then, Jaslyn starts feeling uncomfortable and decides to retreat to her room upstairs. She sits in front of a picture of her father, but suddenly, he disappears from the photo. And if that wasn't enough, it's like someone is sitting behind her in the reflection of the picture frame. It's her father, or at least something that looks like him. Panic sets in, and she bolts out of her room. Now, here's where things get a bit frustrating. I mean, come on, Jaslyn. When you see something like that, the first thing you should do is scream for your friends or call for help. But no, she keeps it all to herself. She doesn't even mention to her friends that she just had a supernatural encounter in her room. Seriously, girl, share the spooky load. Now, let's switch gears and focus on Emma. She's walking along the footpath, sipping on her drink, when that jester clown pops up again. This time, she's a bit tipsy, so she starts talking to him. But guess what? He remains silent, just standing there, holding his poker cards. And then he does that whole pick-a-card routine again. Emma picks twice, but she's had enough. She walks away, but the jester clown keeps following her. That's when she has a moment of bravery and turns around, pushing him away. But in the process, her drink bottle falls and shatters, leaving a sharp piece of glass on the ground. And what does the jester clown do? He picks it up. And Emma, with a mix of courage and sass, starts taunting him, asking if he's planning to cut her. Talk about guts. But hold on for a second. What is Emma thinking? She knows this guy has been harassing her, and she's got a piece of sharp glass in her hand. Instead of running away or calling the cops, she decides to stand her ground and threaten him. I mean, seriously, girl, use your head. So, the jester clown, out of nowhere, takes that sharp piece of glass and cuts his own neck. Yeah, you heard that right. Blood splatters all over Emma's face, and in the blink of an eye, the jester is standing right in front of her. Talk about a horrifying situation. Emma freaks out and bolts away from the scene. She rushes back to the shop she was at earlier, blood still on her face. Now, the shop owner, thinking it's all part of some Halloween prank, doesn't think much of it. But Emma is terrified. She heads straight to the washroom to clean up, while the shop owner decides it's time to call the cops. Smart move, finally. But just as the cops arrive and question Emma, guess who decides to make another grand entrance? Yep, you guessed it, that jester clown. He shows up right in front of everyone, like he owns the place. I mean, seriously, is this guy for real? Demons aren't supposed to be this bold. Within seconds, the jester clown disappears from their sight, only to reappear right behind Emma. She panics and runs in the opposite direction. Now, this is some next-level stuff. It's impossible for a human to move that fast. Even the cops are left dumbfounded, not knowing what the heck is going on. You'd think they'd call for backup or something, considering it's clearly a supernatural situation, but nope, they just stand there, shocked. But wait, it gets even creepier. The jester clown pulls out handcuffs and handcuffs himself. 
Suddenly, he cuffed them and the handcuffs vanished from their hands. Another blink, and the lights go out, leaving one cop without a head with his hat. Yeah, you heard that right. The shop owner freaks out and runs for dear life, while Emma, the poor thing, slips and loses consciousness. Seriously, slipping and passing out. That's a bit over the top, don't you think? When Emma finally wakes up, she's in full-on survival mode. She runs as fast as she can, trying to escape the clutches of this deranged jester. Meanwhile, Jaslyn, her stepsister, heads out to the Halloween festival with her friends. They decide to enter a haunted house, because why not, right? But here's the thing, why do Jaslyn's friends always leave her behind? It's like they have a knack for ditching her. At first, Jaslyn hesitates to enter the haunted house, but eventually, she gathers courage and steps inside. And wouldn't you know it, she spots a figure that looks just like one of her friends, leading her to a mysterious place. Curiosity gets the best of her, and she follows. But what she finds there is beyond terrifying. It's her father hanging lifelessly. She's freaked out, and just when she thinks it can't get any worse, her friend appears and grabs her. Jaslyn panics and runs away, tears streaming down her face. She's lost her family, and it's all too much to bear. But here's the thing, Jaslyn never tells her friend what she saw. I mean, come on, girl. If you just opened up and shared, maybe they could help you through this nightmare. But no, she keeps it all to herself, leaving her friends in the dark. The jester clown, that creepy dude, shows up in front of Jaslyn and her friends, and let me tell you, one by one, he starts knocking them out, like it's some twisted game. And get this, there are plenty of people around, but no one seems to hear their screams. Talk about a horror movie cliché. Finally, the jester clown grabs Jaslyn and takes her away. Emma, terrified and running for her life, gets a call. But guess what? It's not her mom on the other end. It's the jester clown, using some paranormal trickery to mimic her mom's voice. He appears right in front of Emma and throws a picture that Jaslyn had. Emma's in complete terror, desperately asking the jester clown where Jaslyn is, and in her mom's voice. He taunts her, saying she never cared about Jaslyn and actually hated her. The jester clown gives Emma a choice, leave Jaslyn behind and walk away, or stay and face the consequences. But this time, Jaslyn shows that she cares about Emma and decides to stay for her. They find themselves at the same bridge where the jester clown killed Joan. Wait, why would she go there? She should have sought help from someone, like a priest or a father. I mean, that's what people usually do in these situations, right? Anyway, without thinking straight, she ended up on the bridge. Suddenly, a noose appears around Jaslyn's neck, pulled by the jester clown. She falls off the bridge, just like Joan did. But here's the twist, she doesn't die. When she opens her eyes, she's in a strange forest. A little girl appears and reveals herself as Joan's real daughter. It's like a childhood memory of Jaslyn, where she sees John and her childhood self sitting and talking in a wooden house. Emma knows it's an illusion, but John blames her for his death, stabbing himself in the chest and accusing her. Then, Jaslyn appears and tells Emma to kill herself, claiming she's the worst daughter and deserves to die. Emma realizes it's the jester clown disguised as Jaslyn, so she attempts to kill it, but in a sudden twist. Everything turns into reality, and Emma ends up killing the real Jaslyn. That's exactly what the jester clown wanted her to do. She was trying to save her, but the jester clown kept coming back. Emma grabs the knife and plunges it into the jester clown's chest, looking him straight in the eyes, saying she's not running anymore. She has already conquered her fear. The jester clown retreats, defeated. I guess the jester failed to hunt when he went a soul that is in fear and weak is what he really wanted in front of Emma. But what about Jaslyn? Somehow, she gets rescued, and Jaslyn and Emma becomes family. So, if ever you have the misfortune of coming across a demonic clown jester, remember that you need to face it with courage if you want to survive from it.